everyone. Uh, this is the planning board meeting for November 14th, 2017. Um, if we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, before we start, I'd just like to say uh, tonight we have our interim town planner here with us, uh, Jack Hunter. We have our new uh, planner, uh, has it, uh, Stephen Cole, uh, which we just uh, hired and interviewed, and um, and uh, we're glad to see him here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you didn't say that to me, though, did you? <laughs> We're always glad to see Jack, <laughs> <laughs> but I just thought I'd introduce uh, Stephen Cole to the uh, to the public. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing we have on the agenda is a public uh, hearing for Lisa Crowley, uh, Fetch and Rest Doggy Daycare, 160 North Main Street, uh, Assessors Map 24-3-1. It's a request for a special permit to allow a commercial kennel in the Highway Commercial District for the have a zoning bylaws section 2300 and 5300. Jack, would you like to? Uh, sure, I'll do what I can. Um, um, this is a proposal for, technically it's a commercial kennel because of the number of dogs. It's a doggy daycare. It's located at what we, I used to call a Waterstone Plaza. I think it's called Carver Marketplace now, I think. Um, we did distribute the plans to the Board of Health because with doggy daycares, we're always concerned about septic systems. And I also distributed the plans to the animal control officer. Um, there is a response from the Board of Health in here. Unfortunately, the animal control officer has never responded. I don't know if she talked to the applicant or not. And lastly, there's many letters I think are in your packets regarding this project, um, both some concerns from the <coughs> and recommendations from colleagues and et cetera. So I think that sets the stage plan. Is the applicant here tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, please, and okay. use the microphone. Just give us your names. Thank you. Uh, before I start, my compliments to you. I've never been before you, and uh, I practice in Bridgewater. I live on the Cape. But uh, the Pledge of Allegiance is a wonderful thing. It's a practice that I think should be employed in, in other places, and so you set great example, and my compliments to you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've got a brief uh, or a short memo here. I'd like to. I didn't bring enough copies, I'm afraid. We can share. Let me circulate around. Thank you, welcome. You see the memo in favor of. Thank you, Ken. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, for the record, my name is Paul Costello. I'm an attorney with an office uh, in Mr. the Chair. town of Bridgewater at 44. Through you, Mr. Chair. Chair. Could you please use the microphone? It's sure. mostly for the recordings and, and um, for the residents at home. Okay. And welcome. I like to move around, you know, it uh, makes me less nervous, so uh, I'll do my best. Uh, again, for the record, my name is Paul Costello. Uh, I'm an attorney uh, with an office located at 44 Pleasant Street in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Lisa Crowley. Uh, as you know, uh, she has a petition before you as the uh, special permit granting authority. Uh, to uh, seeking approval for a, a doggy daycare business uh, located down at the Carver uh, Marketplace location, which, as you all know, is uh, right off of Route 44. Um, the uh, provisions of the of the, the bylaw um, uh, specifically call for. Uh, well, let, let me back up for a second. This we are located in the. Uh, highway commercial zone and uh, this this proposed use uh, is permitted by special permit by the planning board in this case 
uh, and uh, we, we fall generally into the category of a, uh, of a commercial kennel. And, uh, and by definition, uh, in section six of your bylaws, a uh, uh, commercial kennel is, is defined as um, a, a, a use, at least in part, that uh, provides uh, grooming and boarding uh, for dogs. Obviously, if a business is going to groom and board pets, a natural offshoot of that would be caring for those pets uh, while they're at that location. So I, I will say we will provide daycare, but we're not going to be providing um, uh, any kind of grooming uh, or boarding. There will be no uh, overnight stays or anything of that kind. Uh, this is a, um, a, an operation that will operate from or proposes to operate from about 7 in the morning through to about 6 in the evening. Uh, and uh, the way it works is that uh, clients would uh, come in in the morning on their way to work, drop off their pets. Uh, Lisa would care for them during the day. And uh, customers would come back in the evening to pick them up. And that's how it would, uh, that's how it would work. Uh, the proposal or anticipation right now is that uh, she would operate five days a week, again, from 7 in the morning to uh, 6 in the evening. Uh, some consideration is being given to um, a, a possible uh, uh, availability on Saturdays. Uh, if she were to do that, the hours of operation would be limited probably from 7 in the morning to perhaps 2 in the afternoon. Uh, but that would be something that uh, she would uh, make a judgment call on depending upon the, uh, the popularity of, uh, of, of the business and, and obviously the demand for a need like that on, uh, on Saturday that no consideration is being given to doing anything on Sundays. Um, this is, a, as far as we know, uh, th this is a, a business that's not available in the town of Carver. To the best of our knowledge, this would be, you know, the, the first of its kind. And uh, uh, the, the, her, her target market are, are millennials and single working people with pets. Uh, obviously, uh, if you've got a, a working husband and wife and they're gone all day, uh, this gives them an opportunity to, uh, to provide their, their pets with care. And there is, you know, we've, uh, you know, uh, researched this pretty carefully. And there's, there's significant demand uh, for this kind of a service. Uh, generally, I think it would be uh, a service that would uh, provide a, a, an obvious benefit to the town generally. and, and obviously very specifically to the people who would take advantage of the, uh, of the service. Uh, I, I think the location in this, uh, uh, in this shopping center is such that uh, you know, there would be no issues as far as traffic is concerned, uh, access to, uh, uh, to the, uh, market, uh, the Carver Marketplace Shopping Center uh, is, is you know, right off of uh, Route 44. Uh, the parking lot is huge. And, uh, you know, the location that she's going to move into uh, is, is abutted on either side, I believe, by, uh, by two units that presently are vacant. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, this really, in, in terms of where she's proposing to go uh, and, and for the landlord in question, it's a win-win because, as I say, there are, I, I think, up to six vacant units uh, in this complex right now. And, and so Lisa's uh, arrival I think would be a benefit to everybody. And, and for the others, you know, in the shopping center, if you're bringing uh, new customers into the, into the area, you know, it provides potential uh, uh, benefit to the other, uh, to the other tenants uh, in, the, in the marketplace complex. So uh, uh, as I say, I, I think that uh, given the fact that this is a, uh, uh, a business or, or a service that's not provided in town, there is nothing about what she will do that will, you know, in any way be detrimental uh, to the area or to, uh, to, to the best interests of the town. And for those reasons, uh, you know, I would strongly uh, urge you to approve her application. Uh, and, and on a personal level, uh, this is something that uh, uh, she's been in this business in terms of caring for, you know, for pets uh, for 26 years. She doesn't look old enough to be at anything that long. but. <laughs> Uh, in, in any event, she's been at it a long time. This is a lifelong dream uh, that uh, she's, she's hoping to realize. And again, with, uh, with your help, uh, uh, that'll happen. And we're ready to answer any questions if you have any. 
How many dogs would you uh, take in a day? So I would hope between 35 and 40. Obviously, some days you might not have that many. Other days might have just a many people schedule. So usually it goes by square footage. It's over 2,800 square feet. And the rule of thumb is about 75, sque 75 square feet per dog. So you're going to have the dogs inside the building as well as outside? Mm -hmm. Yes. Outside is more bathroom breaks, get some fresh air. They wouldn't be outside as long as they would be inside, but they would be frequent bathroom breaks, you know, every couple of hours. Um, it wouldn't be that many dogs out at one time because the dogs will be separated into different um, enclosures, small dogs, big dogs, so only one group would be out at a time. So how many people would you, employees would you have here? It's usually one person per 15 dogs, 10 to 15 dogs. So wow. it would be me as well as a couple others when we get to that point, obviously. So. And so people would, would pack out front, bring their dog into the, into the building, through the front of the building? Yes. And, and so people wouldn't be going around back to put the dogs Correct. No, the there's, the um, when you go into a car marketplace in that unit, there's like a front lobby separate from where the dogs would be and no one would be permitted beyond that separate area. So they would hand it over to me or one of the staff members and then from there. And as far as when they're picking them up, same procedure, the dog would be walked out to the lobby. I guess the question is, is that how do you prevent the dogs from barking and, you know, making a disturbance? Can, is, can that be controlled? If yeah, they're generally, dogs that are going to doggy daycare are well-socialized dogs. They're used to going out to dog parks and interacting with other dogs or going for car rides with their owners. In a sense, they're their children. So they're very well-socialized dogs. There's no way to get rid of dog barking at all in a daycare, but it's very usually minimum, just when they're engaged in play with each other. It's a kennel-free situation, so it's not like they're stuck in cages and barking because they're upset. They're playing with other dogs. So if there is a dog that is acting, say, erratically with their barking, there's ways to handle that as well, you know, leading them away from the area, distracting them with something else. But if there is a nuisance dog that just isn't, you know, reacting to any type of discipline, so to speak, you know, then it's daycare situation is not for them. Maybe they benefit from a dog walker or something else. Right, thank you. Uh, anybody else on the board would like to? Uh, have to any you, questions? Mr. Chair. Um, waste. How have you addressed that? <coughs> so five to forty dogs. That's going to be a lot of waste <laughs> per day. So as far as if when they're outside having their bathroom breaks, the way that we're enclosing it is it's going to be stockade fencing. And then we're going to put like a border around the bottom of the stockade fencing. And that border is going to contain pea, stain, pea stone for drainage. And then AstroTurf will be on top of that as far as more comfort for their feet and so dogs won't ingest the gravel. So the poop obviously will be picked up in bags and discarded into the dumpster, the waste basket. And then their area will be disinfected and hosed down maybe multiple times a day. As far as inside, same procedure. If they have a solid poop, we're going to pick it up in a poopy bag and put it in the trash can and then a dumpster at the end of the day, all the trash will be discarded. <coughs> um, actually, this is for Jack. Um, I didn't see anything from the fire department. I did not ask them. I, I, in hindsight, I think I should have. And I will tomorrow give them a set of or a proposal. Just where you have parking stalls behind there? there could, is there a fire lane back there? There isn't. There isn't? Are there sandpipe hookups back there? What is it? For the water, fire suppression. Sandpipe hookups, where the fire department would come in and hook up to the building. Um, do you have well, just where you're putting the enclosure back there. So in the enclosure back there, there's nothing in the way. Um, obviously, we would have Dig Safe come in because there is some gas lines and there is a septic cover back there. But where we're positioning the fencing, it doesn't look like it's going to disrupt anything. And there would also be on that outside enclosure a fence. So if there was access needed, it would be able to be accessed into the back door. I still think the fire department should look Your at that. Your concern is the access around the building. Right. Normally, then. I've never seen anything like that off the back of a building. Normally, they keep that clear yep. for emergency vehicles yep. to pull right up to the building. Good question. Yep. I should have sent that to them. I will. 
appliance company has one. Can we say that? I'm good. The appliance Kevin, do you have any uh, uh, questions? <laughs> well, Chad jumped to the once fencing and the waste and uh, traffic drop off. Now, um, I guess what I would, uh, as far as traffic is concerned, you're going to be, if, if you are at your full potential, you could have 35 cars coming in and going within that hour's time for, you know, drop-offs and pickups. Um, I guess... Uh, it's a three-hour window. There would be drop-offs from 7 to 10 and then pickups from 3 to 6. But if people wanted to make different arrangements, you know, I'm, I'd be willing to work with customers. All right. And the... In the event that... Uh, this is fenced in. You said that you were going to put P stone down for the base, but would there be some type of privacy uh, fencing also? Yeah, uh, it's going to be six foot wooden stockade, so the dogs can't see out, people can't see in. Um, and then the stockade fence would be turned, I don't know what the wording is, but turned backwards so the smooth side would be facing in, so that would prevent dogs from like scaling or climbing. And, and they're supervised 100% of the time as well. And then I guess, again, back to the waste. So as far as removing that amount of waste, um, you're, you're going to put it in a dumpster, but, I mean, that again, that's a lot of waste. Do you have an arrangement? Would you have an arrangement with somebody to have, have them come in more than once a week? Did I see that there that you are going to have twice a week pick up on that? Um, if that's what it takes, I would. And yeah. to you, Jack, would that be a, a board of health question, obviously? Um, it, actually, I think it's your question, and it's a good one. I, um, I had made a list of issues or concerns, not issues, that you guys have run into with the previous dog care. It's, this is all reminding me of um, what happened on um, Center Street. I think it was not center. Yeah, center. Yeah, we had special conditions, I think. Yeah, we yeah, had quite to pick a few. up the waste a couple times a week. Yes. Anything else? I mean, I know you guys probably have questions as well. And then, of course, I know that we ran into um, questions concerning, you know, these dogs are going to obviously, they would have to be licensed. And who's going to be responsible for seeing to the licensing that, you know, the dogs are legitimately licensed and tagged with their proper rabies shots and uh, inoculations. Yeah, is that something that you mm -hmm. would expect? Yeah. 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 Because we, There's, did, um, yeah, we did that with a smaller kennel that, that was in town. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we... This, this protocol, when you have that many dogs together, you know, making sure they have the proper vaccinations, um, spayed and neutered by a, a certain age, as well as flea and tick prevention, it's, you know, you got to take that all into consideration. And absolutely, I would make sure, you know, this people have to come and fill out an enrollment package, and there's like a trial base for the dog to make sure it will fit into daycare, but before they can even start, they have to prove that the dog has had X, Y, and Z done. When you say that you're going to have a gravel base, does that mean that you're going to have to break out the, the <coughs> asphalt that's there to put in well, a gravel it'll base? It'll just be poured on top. That's why that oh. base will be established around the fence. That'll keep any runoff as well as keeping the stones from oh, sliding. So you it. put the stone right over the, the asphalt mm -hmm. and then the carpeting over that. Yep. That's interesting. Any questions? On the, uh, on the map, is it um, the property labeled G is that where the um, yes. unit G correct unit G okay and then I noticed on the application as well it said a small retail section is that going to be that's something that maybe I could grow into it would just be in that front lobby area you know just like some specialty cookies collars some biscuits just things like that just very minimal retail Um, thank you. A lot of the questions have already been answered that I would have asked. Um, you you, rec you uh, referred to an enrollment package. 
can you provide us with that uh, sample of that documentation so that way we can review that that would be um, something that we would put in our package mm -hmm. um, it would be good to know on um, what your criteria is for enrollment for for the pets mm -hmm. and what you're looking for um, on, I would assume that the licensing and rabies documentation be in there mm -hmm. um, it's, it's it's almost like a, a survey like how the dog's behavior is um, yes the flea and tick yeah. making sure it's spayed and neutered has the proper vaccinations and the licensing um, but it's more information that me as the business owner of taking these dogs in <coughs> so I have a better understanding of the dog's behavior before putting them in with the other dogs yeah. So it's, you know, um, has it shown aggression towards people? Has it shown aggression towards other dogs? Um, does it have guarding problems where, like, it would stand over a toy and be threatening to another dog? Yeah. So a lot of that is in that, and then obviously liability waivers as well to protect myself as well as the business. And if, if that's something that you'd just provide to us, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm looking for those same check marks of to establish on you have quite a few letters of recommendation from your peers mm -hmm. that are very good. Um, but you. I also uh, I want to make sure that you're dotting your I's, crossing your T's on your applications. You're not just going to take any pet in there. My concern is the, um, the fitness center and also um, it shows that a day cast, uh, dance studio that's down there. Mm -hmm. um, that's a couple of my concerns. The, the other thing that I wanted to ask for is um, you talk about the pen. I'd like you to provide us with a design of the pen and what in, to include the berm and what the material is going to be and a maintenance plan on that. Okay. So that way we know that over a certain amount of time that will be maintained. It'll be part of the documents that of your permit if it was to be granted that would be part of the documentation that the town would have to go fall back on and to make sure that you take care of those things um, <clears throat> I need to need to address um, how the, how your pets your criteria with you with your customers how the pets are going to be brought into your facility obviously they're not just going to run through the parking lot they'll be all all on a chain I hope right. um, but coming in and going out what's your criteria on trying to maintain the the pets in your facility other than them just running through the door when mom and dad show up to come and get their pets right so um i had said that when they come in there's only access into the lobby and then there's actually a door before you get into where the dogs would be contained for the day so the dogs have to come in on a leash either myself or another staff member will take the dog from the owner and bring it back in with the other dogs and the same procedure would happen when they leave when the owner shows up the dog will be let out to them on their leash into that lobby area and then they go home for the day with their owner wonderful and and while I while I have it in my thought I want to make sure that um, this board does this I'm going to recommend to the chairman to uh, ensure that either Stephen or Mr. Hunter sends a letter um, to uh, the Board of Selectmen addressing um, the um, dog officer um, not responding to this board's request for information. Obviously, in our past uh, doggy daycare facilities, they had an intricate part on making sure and maintaining and with visits to the site making sure that all the documentation was there on the pets all the pets were licensed and ensure that the the applicants maintaining those and I have a concern that we didn't get a response from the dog officer so I think we should address that with a simple letter notice up to Mike uh, to the Board of Selectmen to have them engage that and find out and get some input you know what I'm looking for I know exactly what you're looking for um, that's internal <laughs> thank you um, I think I'm okay for now I, th I think a couple of the things that have been addressed by my other board members and the issues that my my most 
most important thing is the design standard of your pen and also those documents that I I'd like to attach to our okay. application would be wonderful. Um, as far as your letters that you receive from your peers, they're very good. Thank you. So obviously you have some very good experience and you're very well with, with animals. So. Thank you. I'm good, Mr. Chair. Can I just, um, just for the record, uh, we tried to reach out to the ACO uh, animal control officer. Did you, Lisa, you tried as well to mm -hmm. no avail, I believe. I haven't talked to you in a while. She responded one time to my phone call and said that she would like to get together and walk through the property. And I said, okay, is this the best number to get back in touch with you? Because I needed to get the lockbox code from the landlord to get her in. And <clears throat> that was the one and only time I did speak to her. I repeatedly tried calling, leaving her messages to the point that her voicemail box was full and I could no longer leave messages. And, and um, I guess there's been a change in uh, as how uh, the ACO is administered here. It's now through the police department. I did talk to the police chief several times and made sure that the plans and your proposal was given to the ACO. Um, I share uh, Mr. Sinclair's concern. That, uh, and the, the only other one that I've dealt with when I was here, I don't know if you dealt one, with one prior, is that they were very involved. Absolutely. They, they developed a whole protocol um, about the licensing, about the vaccinations, rabies shots, et cetera, about site visits. Um, they inspected the facility. It, it was a, a very professional um, response to your concerns. So, and I'm a, I'm a little taken back why that hasn't happened. I wish I was here full time so I could take care of it better. but. We'll let Stephen help with that <laughs> on Monday. But uh, we'll make sure we try to get a response. Um, in, in your packet, you also have a letter from the Board of Health. Um, they are fine with the proposal, provided there's no grooming. And Lisa knows that. If she chooses to go to a grooming, then I'm going to strongly urge to come back to you and vis-a-vis -vis the Board of Health, because then we have septic concerns and there would have to be a whole Title V examination and that kind of thing. Um, I am, I, I will share with you, Lisa, the protocol that we did for the other doggy daycare and there was dumpster pickup. I think it was every other day. I may be a little off on that. But they had probably half the dogs you had, so I am concerned that, that you're going to have to come up with a better solution than just when you need it. it has to be a constant turnover on that. Um, we also, if you remember, um, we had issues or concerns about the fencing and dogs burrowing and things like that. Um, I know we had them put in a particular kind of fence that I can share with you that prevented any kind of abuse that way. It's a little that was in a residential area, a grassed area, it's not paved, so maybe it's not as much of a factor, but it's something to be concerned about. And just one other question for me is, what, and I think you, you talked about it, but the liquid waste from the dogs when they're outside, you say you take a hose and, and wash down the area, and then you put disinfectant down? So where, does, where is that going to drain? Is, does that, is that contained in the pen area? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the pea stone will absorb most of it, and then eventually it will dissipate on its own. It's really the, the surface area, you know, will be disinfected so the do dogs won't have an outbreak or anything like that. Do you change the stone after a period of time? Or? I would imagine so, yeah. I mean, anything that needs to be addressed, most certainly I would address. But the disinfectant will kill any kind of, you know, bacteria or illnesses associated with the dogs. It's a kennel, you know, safe, dog safe type of disinfectant. Uh, now, the, the outside kennels, does it have a cover over, a, a, a roof or canvas cover over it? You, it can, you can put up like an easy up, so it'll help with, sh give the dog shade as well as if we're out there in the elements, it'll give us a little bit of cover when we're standing there waiting for them to do their business. Okay, so, so when it rains, the rain will down over this area. Right. 
All right, if there aren't any more questions from the board, I'll open this up to the public. One thing, Mr. Chair, um, the disinfectant that you'll be using for the waste, can you provide us that information? I want to make sure that the, um, well, we're, we're all on well waters here and, and um, the runoff. But yeah. there's still a concern. Still a runoff with the, with the absolute concern. Um, so if you could provide us that. If I recall, well, we did have them provide the product and yep. limited them to that product, yep. if I recall. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a public hearing, and so I'll just open this up to the public. If there was, if there's anybody that would like uh, to speak. Stand up, come in if you could uh, use the microphone and, uh, and talk. Yeah, please. If you just give us your name and address and speak into the microphone. <coughs> and if and what we'll do is if you could if you have any questions, you can address the questions to me. Okay. Then I'll see if we can have. It. I don't want. People yeah, going, going back and forth. Back and forth. And um, I'm Rob Kirkland, 20 Montella Road in Plimpton. I'm basically right, right behind the plaza there. Um, my major concern is the noise from the dogs. Now, I maintain a property in Kingston, the old O'Donnell Sand and Gravel building, that has the same basic dogs. You know, mm -hmm. it's a daycare. They have a pen out back. And the dogs allowed. And I work in Situate, where they have, you know, another one right next to the road. The dogs allowed out in the pen. And be behind the plaza, there's always something going on. Like you have the forklifts going. You have um, them unloading, you know, the uh, stuff at Carver Appliance. Which it's not the dogs' fault, but they're going to start barking. And I think that's where there's going to be a major, because if you live behind that plaza, like since they've removed all the trees, added tractor supply, the noise level from that plaza is like quadruple in my, at my house. Now, the other night at, well, it was morning, 5 o'clock in the morning at uh, the dollar store, they were getting a delivery. The guy has his doors open with his radio. I could hear that in my house with all the windows shut so the amount it's I know people say that it's not the dogs aren't going to be loud but you can't you can only you can only do so much and that's where my major concern is and like I said I know it for firsthand by dealing with it in Kingston and it they're going to be loud so you're going to be you're going to have a lot of neighbors and and that's the thing with all these other businesses there isn't any residents backing up to these buildings. The one in Kingston, there isn't any residents near it. The one right on the driftway, there isn't any residents right around it. The one in Pembroke, right off the highway, there isn't any residents because of the dogs barking. I mean, that's, I mean, as far as a business out front, I, I, I wish you all the luck in the world, you know, but that's where my concern is is the whole neighborhood behind us is just losing any peace we have. Yeah, I thought we, uh, I know we did on the tractor trailer, we had hours of delivery, but I'm not so sure on the old plaza whether we, that was long before my time. Before mine. On the board, you know, whether we had any delivery hours. It was not. before my time. Yeah. Your time. Yeah, tractor supply isn't it bad. It's, you it, said hours. Oh, you, you said, said hours there. Yeah, yeah hours I don't know. Delivery, yeah. I know with the old plaza, it did have a thing, no parking overnight out front. But yeah. I don't know. We always have to fight about dumpsters. It's mostly with the dollar store. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the sound travels unbelievable behind that plaza. Right. It's, you know, it's, but thank you. Okay, thank you. I don't know if you want to respond to that. If I could. Uh, yeah, if you could uh, use the microphone, please. Yeah. yeah, it worked. Yeah. I'm home at, I'm home at 3.30 every day. Okay, all right. Um, we're not going to be talking about 40 dogs out, you know, barking, you know, whether there's any any disturbance or, or what have you. They're not going to be there on the weekends. They're not going to be there in the evening. Again, the hours of operation are such that, you know, it's, it's not going to interfere with the majority of time that you or any of your neighbors are there. I'm just curious, um, 
Excuse me, excuse me. In order to, uh, if you could use the microphone, please. And, um, uh, you know, I just don't want a, a bunch of talking in the audience. It's just difficult to handle that way. These are photographs that I took of Montello, and uh, this is from the uh, from the point on uh, Montello that's that's parallel with the back doors to uh, to uh, the unit that Lisa was occupying. You know, you know, uh, I just want to say is probably before we uh, uh, conclude this meeting tonight. We'll, we will probably want to go for a site visit, so we can we can take a look at some of these things. Uh, yeah. We can discuss that later. You know, we'll see where the pens are, see what the buffering is, see how far the neighbors are away, and, uh, and we'll have to schedule. A site. If you're going to do that, I will spare you uh, any further argument on on that issue. Uh, I was down on Montello with specific concerns about. What, what, you know, the, the concerns that you've raised, trying to get an idea of what proximity any of the houses have to where Lisa will be located. This is a big complex. There's a tractor or a, a equipment supply place that's down. Now, are, are you on that end of Montello I'm, down yeah, there? Right behind that. I, I would respectfully, you know, estimate that in terms of where Lisa will be located, the distance from where she will be and where you are is maybe 250 to 300 yards. It's a pretty good distance. And I would also point out that uh, you have, and as the photographs will show, there is a, uh, a, a large uh, uh, wall of, of hemlocks located on the, on the, you know, the, the, the rear uh, boundary of, of the, the, the plaza. Uh, that, that, look, it, it doesn't eliminate all noise, but it certainly would assist with respect to, uh, you know, the buffer that it would provide. But again, if, uh, if the members of the board are going to go down to, uh, to view uh, uh, the site, then you know, I, I won't take up any more of your time on that argument. Anyone else have any other questions? Kristen Kirkland, 20 Montello. Um, unfortunately, if we can hear a radio, we can hear a dog from a tractor trailer. Um, so if the pen is out back of, I think it was G, unit G, how is the dollar store going to get their deliveries? They back in right now, so they're going to back up directly next to the fence of the dogs? We'll, we'll, take a, we'll have to take a look at that when we do the site visit. And, but we, we can... Uh, See if that question can and be I know the plaza today. itself doesn't have well water, but we do. And there's an aquifer right there that's been noted on uh, a couple of the different maps. And the whole neighborhood has well water. So the runoff, you know, is it going to be absorbed? Is it going to be changed? You know, what are the um, restrictions that she has to follow? I think that's really important. I drink that water. Um, let's see. So the dumpsters. Um, to go back the hours that were supposed <coughs> to be established. Um, the last, today we were up at four with waste management. I've called headquarters. Um, last Thursday, we were up at 4, 17. Last Tuesday, it was 4.08. It's a little cranky today. Oh, for what business was this? They were emptying the dumpsters. So. For the whole, for the whole. For a different. Uh, tractor trailer? Like, tra uh, not tractor supply, I think it was a dollar store. Mm. So we already have noise issues and it magnifies all the way to our house. So, uh, you know, I really have a hard time with the dogs. As I said, my husband, 
he takes care of a building that already houses a, do a doggy daycare. So the noise is terrible. You can't even pull up without them barking. There's signs all over. Don't, you know, engage the dogs. Don't, you know, say anything to the dogs because that's all you can hear is them barking. And let's see, the hours. It's um, kind of vague. I'm sorry. You know, seven to six, maybe some overnight, Monday through Friday, maybe a Saturday, but definitely not a Sunday. I don't know. I think it has to be more clear. I think the hours of operation has to be standardized. They can't, if she needs to extend her hours, she needs to come back because then that affects us. Six o'clock at night, I'm home. You know, I leave at six in the morning and I'm home by then. I don't want to hear dogs. My dog doesn't bark. You know, and if, if the hours are not going to be adhered to, what's going to be done? You know, you guys don't live there. So, you know, we can talk mm -hmm. all we want, but we're the ones that's going to have the results of the, the noise and everything else. So uh, that's my concern. So we can say all we want here, but as we know now, even with the, you know, the rules of dumping things in the back or emptying, I should say, they're not adhered to now. What are we going to do here that's going to make this happen? Um, let's see. And if the noises become a a problem, like do you do one of those like mechanical noises so the dogs can't bark or hear, or, you know, to keep the noise down? I don't know. What's a mechanical noise? I don't know. They make these low pitch fre or high pitch frequencies that the dogs would affect the dogs. That stumped me. I don't know. Like I, you know. <laughs> You're putting a, a commercial kennel in an industrial spot that abuts neighborhood. So, uh, you know, my concerns are very great. You know, and, and everything here is just, it's just too vague. It has to be stated. It has to be clear. It has to be concise. If she doesn't follow the rules, what happens? What are the repercussions? Well, if you complain and come to the board, um, something will have to be done about it because they have to adhere to the rules that we set down. So what happens if they, the rules aren't followed? If the rules aren't followed, uh, the board could have another public hearing. They could revoke the license. The building commissioner could put a cease and desist on the property. I mean, it goes all the way up the ladder, just like any business. So from here, is it's just an open meeting to discuss the, the permit. Where do we go from here? What's the next step? Well, probably we'll listen to everybody's concerns tonight. Mm -hmm. The board will go for a site visit, and we'll actually take a look at the conditions on site. And then we'll probably have another meeting, schedule another meeting. They'll, and they'll continue the public hearing to another date. You'll have another opportunity, and then at some point they'll close it and decide what to do. So it's not an open when you decide it's closed. Oh, it's oh, oh, no, they close the public hearing so there's no more testimony. Okay. No, no, it's okay. always open. Okay. All right. Thank you. So this has a ways to go yet. I this is just so. the beginning tonight, and we'll listen to everybody's concerns. In response, for the record. Uh, in terms of the hours of operation, right now, what is planned is Monday through Friday, 7 to 6. No overnight, no boarding, no grooming. I want to be very clear on that. That's, that's the intent. Some consideration right now is being given to, perhaps, depending upon how things would go, um, opening for uh, a limited period of time on Saturday. And I would say that to the extent that there are those concerns, uh, particularly in light of, you know, it, it's a weekend, uh, we would be willing to condition any kind of Saturday operation on coming back before you to, you know, to, to, to revisit that issue if Lisa decides that that's in her best interest. Okay. Does anybody else have any uh, questions or concerns? Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening. Richard Jackson, number four, Heather's Path, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I have about 200 feet of road frontage on Montello. I think I'm physically located the closest to the shopping center. Um, 
I just want to reiterate the Kirkland's concerns and just point out that um, <clears throat> the noise back there is always amplified by the reflection off the building. Mm -hmm. So it sounds, what, what doesn't sound too bad when you're back there, because I go to the gym and sometimes we work out in the parking lot, but um, <laughs> when you're standing in the yard, the reflection mm -hmm. off the building is very loud. So, and <clears throat> that's it. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. Anyone else? Robert Belbin, 26 Gate Street. Um, some of the comments that I wrote down as I was listening is uh, the fence. Uh, they're saying the good side is going to be toward the dogs. Uh, you can't do that. The good side has to be outside to the public area. Um, with the fence issue also is that I think cover appliance back there has a chain link fence back there too. So um, the health records most definitely to keep track. I have two dogs and they play rough in boxes and they bark like crazy. Um, I only put one out at a time because I don't want them going off to my neighbor's dog and having a barking fest. All right, that's just two. Um, where I live, I can hear on the weekends the um, racetrack in Middleborough. It travels, that noise travels. Um, I kind of have an issue, even though I'm not in a butter, all right, but the drainage of this, the way it sounded is there's gonna be asphalt, then P-stone on top of that, and then AstroTurf above that. Well, there has to be some type of drainage where this is gonna go to. If you spray it down or whatnot, it has to be either dry wells or something where all this fluid that comes out is going to go to. And then you have the smell issue too. I mean, if it's just going to be dispersed this way and that way, it's going to travel and it's going to smell. Um, uh, the hours, I mean, I'd rather go the whole way personally, give them the right to open on Saturdays when they want to, just give 30 days notice or whatnot to let you guys know that, hey, give them that. That way they don't have to keep coming back and forth and then paying the money for the fees and everything. Um, noise for the neighbors, I put that out there. I mean, because it is going to be noisy. You can't help it. There's going to be noise when the dogs go outside. All right. Um, and then, uh, as always, you guys are awesome with it, but uh, mark the locations of where this fence is going to be and everything. Um, probably say that anyways, but I just want to reiterate that. You know, that the big thing is the drainage because we're all on uh, we're all on well water around here and granted I live over here but although people the Board of there. Health agents did, did say it was okay yeah but we could we could take a look at you know maybe have to take a second look at that yeah just to make sure just the drainage issues because I said you have other businesses that are around there that the smell issue may be an issue and catch it before it gets out of line thank you very much okay thank you Anyone else? Oh. Hello. Good evening. I'm Christine Joy from uh, 10 Dukes Rook Road in Plimpton. And um, my only recommendation would be consideration of eliminating the outdoor pen. The dogs could be trained to use a uh, space inside the building and that way you wouldn't have the barking issues and the um, the waste would be contained within the building so that's just something I'd like to throw out there thank you anyone else why don't we uh, seeing seeing no other hands um, why don't we uh, schedule a site visit and then we'll continue this to our next meeting. Does that um, work? Well, I, you're looking at the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he doesn't start until Monday. This is Stephen doesn't start until Monday, so <laughs> that's when you should have it. <laughs> um, my, I, you know, obviously that's what you usually do is go. Your next meeting is the 28th. That's mm -hmm. not a problem. Just you got the holidays next week, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's all. I had a list of things to make sure that Ms. Lisa 
say and her attorney can take care of that we did the, have a list from the get, last doggy daycare and I want to share had, that yeah. with her yes yeah but anyway just that's you're gonna my, speak to her now about that or just gonna um, yeah, okay the list later? Um, make sure you get us an enrollment package make sure you get us a more defined design of the pen I think we need an operation and what we call in the business an O&M plan operation and maintenance plan make sure you have your procedures your hours I will give you what the previous doggy daycare gave us was very well done and the board liked that if I recall yeah. um, something to consider that the board at the last doggy daycare had a six month window or maybe a year window when you revisited it after a year just to see how they're doing it actually worked out I think drainage is something that we should look at and I think your landlord should be aware of what you're doing with that drainage or if there is an issue with the drainage I, I'm not familiar with the process you're trying to use here but it's something uh, of concern and I will send you the decision they did the protocols <coughs> the designs that we did um, for that other doggy daycare that's all thank you Jack yes sure just come up hi uh, my name is Steve Cohen I live in a uh, Heather's path also um, and that street is right you know it's off Montello going in away from the uh, plot the back of the plaza um, one of the things you know I've lived there for almost 20 years and one of the things that I see all the time is that you know there's a lot of people that actually walk their dogs along Montello because of as you go further down there's the industrial park so a lot of people are walking their dogs and I think that's you know if there's dogs outside that's even going to increase the, that's an you know an incentive for the dogs to start barking because they know there's another dog on the other side of the fence and um, the whole the whole back of that property is is all tarred so I have a real concern about um, the drainage I mean I I find it I, I know that this gentleman here said that the Board of Health um, agent was fine with it I just I, I I just can't imagine how he could be fine with it when where would it go where would all the urine go from 40 dogs every day I have to, I have let me finish of course. I have two dogs of myself okay a German Shepherd and a, a, a golden retriever um, we, my wife and I we spend all time and we have a my dogs are trained to go out <laughs> along our driveway where it is all crushed stone and yeah I can rinse it off and I pick up the poop we pick up the poops all the time there's just two dogs it, you know after two or three days there's a lot of poop and I just can't imagine with 40 dogs they're not gonna I mean you don't want the, I mean I can't imagine the landlord would want them peeing or pooping inside of his building I, I mean he'd have to be insane to allow that to happen so I don't see how they they could do anything else but have it outside but then of course then it's like I said well, where is it all going to run off I mean it's 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 all tar and if it's going to run off anywhere it's going to run into it's going to run off the back of it into Plimpton where you know where Rick Jackson lives and the Kirklands live and there's another family that's not even here that uh, you know um, a couple other families actually that are all behind that property and I would and I would argue too that it's that Mr. Costello said that it's 250 to 300 yards away I don't think so I don't even think the back of that building is a hundred yards so I, it's a lot closer than that from from you know where Montello is to the back of the building so that's all I have to say Okay, we'll take a look at that when we do a site visit. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair, I just wanted, the only thing I was going to say is that in Carver, the Board of Health doesn't review drainage. That's all I was going to okay. say. Okay, all right. All right, so uh, when is everyone available for a site visit? I'm uh, I'm on. <clears throat> I could probably.
probably do it Tuesday. Other than that, I'll be unavailable. That's the only window I got. I have obligations this weekend, and I don't know when my next available date will be after Tuesday for anything. Yeah, things are getting busy for everybody. Um, Tuesday, would Tuesday work? What time Tuesday? It gets, it gets dark so early now, so we'd have to be... Could probably be... I can make 3.30. Unfortunately, I am unavailable at 3.30 for the next three weeks. I have uh, obligation from 3.30 to 5.30 every day. Okay. Um, I can do 3.30. Could you? But I would very much well want to be a part of well, some type if, of site walk. If I went there, I could take you, we could revisit the site. If you uh, contacted me, we could mm -hmm. uh, just go out and take a look. Okay. Okay, we could do something like that. We could arrange that. Um, 3.30 Tuesday. <coughs> I mean, I guess if that's... I, I, I can do it. I'll try to do it. I will do it. All right. <laughs> it's bu everything's busy, but yeah. Maybe you want to make sure the applicant's available? <laughs> yeah, uh... Would somebody be there? And be there. and if you could, for us, even if you took chalk or something, would if you could just mark out in the parking lot where the pens are going to be. It's, it's already there. The pens are there. No, the, the markings are there. Oh, the markings are there. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So you were thinking ahead. Yeah. That's good. You knew this was going to happen. All right. It all depends upon you. Twenty first, three thirty. Okay, so so that's going to be Tuesday, so I don't forget the twenty first at three thirty. And I could try to meet you there before that. At three thirty, I have to be on the road. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Make a motion to set the public um, the sidewalk. For uh, Tuesday at 3.30. Second up. So we have a motion and second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that was unanimous. So we'll do the site one. So then we want to uh, schedule the next meeting, the continuation. And that will be for 7 o'clock. Mm, you have a hearing already at 7 on the 28th, I'd suggest 7.15. Okay, we can do that. Special permit till December twelfth at seven twenty. Sound like a good time. 
Okay. <laughs> well, be before we used to just schedule from a former yeah. planner. We used to just schedule everything Summer at climate. seven, and then statute says be time and specific time and place. What's that? Statute is specific time and place. So we don't do that anymore. No, <laughs> <laughs> what would you like, Stephen? <laughs> He's gonna show up. He's gonna show up. You're in good hands. What what, what, what other what other uh, items do we have? For you are gonna have a couple public hearings for the twelfth. Um, okay. That, that we haven't scheduled yet. We're gonna do it. So, so if we ever get to the agenda, yes. So okay. I'd suggest you just kick it off right at seven. And seven for this one. For and this then, one. For the, then the rest Very we'll, well. we'll figure out. I'll amend my we'll motion to seven. Time. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, we have a motion. Uh, second that. And a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 That's so unanimous. December 12th, 7 p.m. here. So we'll see you Tuesday the 21st. And I will email you everything, in, and I'll try to do a little memo to you on what we're expecting. Everybody will be the last It's for the... It's just for board members only, and uh, and one person, Lisa, will be there, and that'd be fine. That's, okay, so that's it's, it's just for us. Basically, when you meet, um, front and back. Um, we probably. Uh, I think okay, we're yeah, most yeah, interested in the front, in the back. What's what's going to happen in the back? Okay. Okay. So, so uh, we'll be at the site at three thirty Tuesday, the twenty first. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All this stuff back in the <coughs> Otherwise, yeah, Jill will get very upset. <laughs> see, we'll see, see how. Yeah. <laughs> she may be there. You can take a look. This is a form A. That's a problem. Yeah. The one that texts it's right there. All right, next on the agenda, we have an approval not required plan. It's uh, Clark Griffith Trust, South Main Street and Indian Street. Mr. Chairman, this is actually the town's application. Um, I know even before when I was here, Mr. Griffith had been putting some of his property into conservation restrictions. And he would now like to donate some land to the Conservation Commission. Uh, the town, vis a -vis the town administrator has asked GAF to put together a Form A, and I'll let Brian explain it. Good evening. Thank you, Brian Grady with GAF Engineering here for the town and for Mr. Griffith. Uh, Mr. Hunter's correct. Uh, Mr. Griffith, Griffith has been uh, divesting himself of some of his properties and this one he's looking to donate to the Carver Conservation Commission it's already has a conservation restriction on the piece of land uh, we have this new plan before you tonight with Jack about this uh, a little bit back um, this piece is a standalone piece we were before you I don't know a year or so ago uh, <clears throat> creating what is shown as lots 3a lot 1 and uh, on a previous plan and those lots have since been conveyed to the Weston brothers uh, what's shown in the upper right corner that small piece that approximately half an acre piece, lot 3C was conveyed by deed uh, to the adjacent property owner, uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, so uh, Jack suggested we prepare this plan uh, to try to rectify that a little bit where it was conveyed by deed and not by a plan. Um, so this plan defines the lot to be donated and it also <clears throat> defines that lot that was previously taken out of this parcel and conveyed by deed. So um, that reduced plan I have in front of you, the parcel that's highlighted in green, is the parcel to be donated. 
it's uh, 8.7 acres in total. Do you have any comments, Jack? Or? Um, no, I think it's wonderful that uh, <laughs> Mr. Griffith, is, his reputation precedes him. And, um, uh, the Conservation Commission wants it, and I, I know that they are asking that, uh, I talked to attorney at Koppelman and Page, your attorneys, and they'd like this, hopefully, if you could endorse this tonight so that the closing and the current transgression can take place immediately. So this meets all the dimension, dimensional it, requirements? It's already, yeah, it's just clearing up what, in my opinion, should have been done instead of just a deed transfer. It should have been okay. a half. So it's just cleaning it up, and the attorney, want, our, your attorney would like that. It, it, it looks fine to me. Does anybody have any uh, questions, concerns? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to endorse the form A for uh, Mr. Glyph Griffith's uh, generous gift to the Conservation Commission. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, that's unanimous. Are you thinking this for the floor? I was going to ask you that. They, we would have to get that to them eventually. So if you have it, they can come here yep. and grab it from you. Okay. Sure. Thank okay. you very much, Brian. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We have a uh, next. We have several receipts of plans. Uh, the first one is DHP Realty Trust. It's the Patriots Pine subdivision. It's uh, zero South Meadow Road. Um, oh, this is, Mr. Chairman, this is a definitive um, subdivision. You've already heard the preliminary subdivision. And I, because of timing and you, that you didn't meet two weeks ago, um, I'm asking to schedule the public hearing for um, November 28th at 7 p.m. We've already advertised because of timing. So okay. that's number one. I'd like you to officially establish that. And then secondly, um, so if you could do that, and then I have a second comment. Um, and I know that the applicants, maybe attorney and or engineer, would like to speak to the board. All right. Uh, like a motion. Come back. Huh? Come back. <coughs> so you want to set this for the 28th? Yes, it's 7 p.m. And Jim's out of town. Yeah. In um, the his hearing's already scheduled for the 28th. Jim, I'm deaf in my right ear. The hearing's already scheduled for the 28th, and you're only going to have three members present, and you need three members for a positive vote. Right. It's your choice. I prefer to have as many as I can. So I'm going to suggest you have to have the hearing on the 28th. You, yep. you can continue it without hearing evidence to the 12th, is my suggestion. So te technicality, you're going to have to. Well, this is going to complicate things. Mm -hmm. So you need I need you to establish the hearing for the 28th at 7 p.m., and then I'd like to talk about another issue. Yep. Make a motion to establish the public hearing for Patriot Pine Subdivision 0 South Main, South Meadow Road for November 28th at 7 p.m. Second. Uh, Chad's not here. Can we continue? Uh, no, no, you're just establishing the hearing. Oh, so. okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, Chad's not here, so we can. And have we to have the attorneys the for both the seller and the buyer here. Um, I think it'd be best if you guys could uh, maybe talk to the board. There's a timing issue. This it just got more complicated because the 28th is you. They're choosing not to hear the the issue. So I don't know if you guys want to address the board about the timing issue and a resolution. Let's, let's go. We'll go. We'll go with the three members. Pardon me. We'll go with three members. 
You still have a timing issue that I think you want to discuss with the board, I believe. Oh, yes, right. So, Sarah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for giving us a few moments of your time informally. Um, as you know, we have filed a definitive subdivision plan. We were before you um, a couple of weeks ago with a preliminary plan that has been refined to a definitive. Um, we've been talking with Jack about our timing, and because we're coming to the end of the year into wintry weather, into holiday season, um, and everyone's schedules are getting tighter and tighter. We thought we would come tonight um, informally just to ask the board um, at the um, November 28th hearing, um, <clears throat> assuming that the board is going to want to do a site visit and um, potentially continue for further discussion um, in the interest of um, addressing some of these timing issues. Um, we would like to ask if the board would consider, um, number one, a special meeting for this pro particular project after the, uh, we open on the, and provide testimony on the 28th to uh, potentially December 5th rather than wait the full two weeks to be continued to December 12th, if needed. Um, we're presuming that it, a, a second hearing would be needed. Um, so that's one request that I'd like to ask for your consideration. The second of two um, would be to consider um, an informal site visit prior to um, November 28th um, or December 5th, whatever we could schedule, just in the interest of um, moving things along and, and not being out there in um, you know, the peak holiday and uh, cold weather and trying to kind of wrap things as the year closes out. Um, so those are our two respectful requests to the board before we uh, formally open the public hearing. This is the form. Yeah. Mr. Chair, through you, um, if you are thinking of a informal site visit mm -hmm. um, to the site, um, what dates are you proposing? Because we have the holidays next week. Right. Um, I can make myself avail available whenever the board members can be available. I work locally. I have two other colleagues that can be available. We can be as flexible as needed. Um, the roadway has been staked, so it's it's very accessible. Um, I can <coughs> come out separate times with each of you if need be, or with the group. I really I will, you know, be as flexible as need be. Do you, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. to both of our planners, because we're that great of a board, we need to. <laughs> um, if we're going to do an informal site visit, where we saw the uh, preliminary um, site plan, um, and we'd be going out to look. I know the entrance is staked, but if I wanted to see the drainage easement staked um, in the proximity to the neighbor's houses, um, uh, Mr. Abatello's, I forget the other gentleman's name, Mr. Kavicki's house, that bog out front, would would it be pertinent to ask that now? Yeah, all right. Even you can ask anything you want. You just heard me. I, you know, <coughs> I think they've done a very good job on this subdivision. From an engineering standpoint, we're having the technical review committee meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm getting very few comments. I have no idea what these voters' concerns are, but we can think of few, right? I think you've just named a few. Um, I think there's a couple ways to skin this, so to speak. You could have a, a site visit before the 28th and then vote on the 5th if that's amenable to you. You could have the hearing open on the 28th, have the site visit in between them, then in the 5th, and then vote on the 5th. So uh, yes, to your, the qu answer to your question is yes, of course, they'll, I'm sure they'll stake anything you want to stake, and they'll have it ready for you. Just saying that without even opening up the public hearing, 
how do we get that message to them? Uh, Other than they just heard me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know what we'll say because they typically vote to have a posted site visit. You could vote to have a posted site visit. I understand. I think it would be cleaner and better. If, a, I think if you could decide amongst yourself if you're willing to have a special meeting on the 5th, that would be the first decision. And if the answer is yes, then I think you could probably do a site visit in between the 28th and the 5th real quick. That's the way I would like it, yeah. And on the 28th, I can't be here the 28th. Stephen will be here. I'll have a memo, as we always do, about what the concerns are. We've already have had the TRC. I would hope, knowing the professionalism of Beals and Thomas, is that by the 28th, the town's issues will be addressed. You can't, at this point, address the abutters' issues because you don't know what they are. Right. So I think that would be the cleanest, but that's always up I to think you. so, too. <coughs> they have the meeting first, and they will try to. Well, now, I guess, as Jack said, uh, are we willing to come back the f December 5th for a <coughs> special meeting? I don't have a problem with the 5th. I should be good. No, Jim, can't do it, huh? No, I'm not all that week. And we need, <coughs> we'll need, we need three. <coughs> so, uh, so we're gonna, so we'll probably have three. Well, if Jim's not gonna be here the 28th, he can't sit anyway on. Oh, that's house. right. Yeah. Okay. So, you're so it'll at least. And can you make it December fifth? I'm gonna have to at this. Point. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have plans to you know, well, travel out of Chicago? Chad's not gonna be able to be involved. Jim's yeah. gonna be out of town. He can't be. Can you do it? Okay. Mr. Chairman, is he gonna be here um, on November 28th? I'd like to talk about remote participation for that meeting, where we have a sitting member that is a direct abutter. And we have a, have one of our members that will be away on business. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have a have an avenue um, where we can use remote participation for this application, um, where Jim will be away, but he could remotely come in. We enacted it I think twice before. Once once for um, Mr. Robinson when he was in Hawaii. Um, under certain circumstances where, we, where one of our members is a direct abutter, I think this gives us an avenue, and we can check whether or not we can, en we can enact that. I think direct that it's, it's a purview of the board. You can it. absolutely enact it because three is a quorum. You can't make a quorum with the remote, but you can right. add on to that, so to speak. So, like the other hearing, you only had four, and you needed four for a quorum, and that's why Jim couldn't do remote. Right. In this case, he can. So, okay. So I think I think that there's Could Chad we should the remote too. If he, he can't. Be? He can't even. Chad can't because oh, he's Chad. in a butter. Oh. Chad's in conflict. And that's why I'm saying that we should we should enact the remote participation for Jim, where he's out of town. We have one of the uh, sitting members a direct butter. Mm -hmm. I think it's imperative that we have the remaining four board members involved and I'm sure that you can be accessible. I don't okay. want to speak for you but I know that you're interested in this project so. All right then we'll somehow arrange it that way. Is that? That's great. So on the 28th you'll have the hearing. Jim will, will phone in and at that time you can schedule your site visit and you can continue it to the 5th. So there's a small window between right. the 28th and the 5th. Hopefully yeah. we can work out a day that we can all <coughs> that If that I'm going to be remote on the 28th, the reason we were going to push it to the 5th was, was why? So you can vote. Typically, you always have a site visit before you vote. Oh, I see what you're saying. You asked for a week earlier than the 12th. Yes. Right. Gotcha. Yes. We were assuming a continuation, yeah. so. Okay. It, with the appeal period, assuming hopefully, I guess, a nerve mind that you approve it there's an appeal period and they got to meet all the their concerns 
observe real estate concerns before the 31st. We still can discuss it on the 28th now that I'll be remote. It's not just an automatic reschedule to the 20 to the 5th. No, you have correct? to continue. I mean, it has to be a vote to continue. Right. Is that what you mean? But it can oh. open and there can be discussion. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. absolutely. Originally, wasn't the plan just to open <coughs> just it? Just to continue. Open it to continue. With yes, it. but and they now. decided they'd go with yeah, three. Think. Now they got four. So. Yeah, I think so we'll actually be able to anymore. take testimony and we'll arrange somehow to cue you in. Okay. Okay, so we're saying that on November 28th, we're going to have the meeting and we're going to, we're going to, and Jim will be remote. a remote participant. Yep. All right. And, uh, and then we're going to schedule a site visit and then we're going to come back to this December 5th. At a special right. meeting, and will Jim be with us then? No, he'll, he'll be, be remote. remote he'll be that, remote again. And that's okay. So okay, so we'll do it, and and that's all. Then that's fine. And we'll have to practice our remote particip participation skills. I'll skills give you. Uh, there's a declaration the chairman has to make. I haven't done this since I've been in Carver, but, uh, but we'll get that for you. And we, we've used it. Mr. Chairman, I, I want to uh, thank you for scheduling the special meeting in behalf of the landowner of the A.D. Makepeace Peace Company. There's an additional matter that Jack alluded to that's driving this. It's not just the winter weather, but if the hearing were to close on the 5th and the decision were filed promptly, then it's possible that the 20-day appeal period would expire with just enough time in calendar year 2017 to close this. So that, that's part of what's motivating us. So I'm going to make a motion to um, schedule a special meeting uh, for December 5th at 7 o'clock um, for this project. So at least we have it on our calendar. Yeah. All right. So <coughs> and we already scheduled it for 7 o'clock on November 28th to yep. open. Okay. Yep. And so end December 5th. <coughs> So that's a motion, Mr. Chairman. So we have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second that. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 So that's uh, unanimous and and uh, with uh, one not here. Chad. So I guess that will that takes care of that. Thank you very much. Uh, much thank appreciated. You. Thank you. I see you tomorrow. Thank you, Counselor. Stephen Cole, Attorney Service. <laughs> He'd have to recuse himself of you. <laughs> okay. Next, we have uh, Eatable Land Holdings on Pine Street, a receipt of plans. Yes, I'd like to, this is for, um, they are repaving the parking lot, or paving the parking lot at Eatable and doing some, a lot of drainage, et cetera. And I'm recommending you have the public hearing on December 12th, 15. Okay, that sounds good. Make a motion to schedule the public hearing for Edaville Land Holdings uh, for the project on Pine Street for December 12th at 7:15. Second that. I have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All of us here, you know, unanimous. Next, Jamie Emerson, 57 Wenham Road. This is a Form A. I'm only asking you to receive it tonight. Um, I, have <coughs> I have to admit, I have. It looks like he's just adjusting a lot line. That's what he's doing. If you see, 
parcel C, this piece is being transferred over here. Over here. Over here. Parcel C is to be conveyed and to combined with parcel B here. Just up in the corner, Jack. Yeah, and parcel D on the bottom is so they're swapping land. Just swapping, yeah, swapping. 3A and and 4A are swapping land, so nothing changes. So this is an A and R, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So um, this will be on your agenda for the 28th mm -hmm. for a possible endorsement. Next we have uh, Christy Gibbs Kendrick, possible rezone on Tremont Street. Mr. Chairman, I've been I've known Christy for a long, long time. Hi, Christy. Um, My husband, Scott Kendrick. Hi. <coughs> and um, she has a very interesting story. They have an interesting story about their parcel and past zoning and what they'd like to do. <coughs> at town meeting, they're looking for a rezoning, a possible rezoning, and um, I'll let her explain it. I, did you bring something for them to look at? I brought um, the and copy of the zoning map that I bought when I received the keys to my property. Which um, why don't you tell them where your property is? Property is on 58, the last house in Carver. 366 on Tremont Street. Street. Hatch like that because yep. it's in the historic. No, because it's oh. business. Oh, it's business commercial. <coughs> and sometime, we, although we didn't we receive a notification, that we looked on the computer and it's showing residential mostly resident or agricultural, agricultural residential. residential. Mm -hmm. That's all right. And yeah. We weren't notified of a zoning change at the time, mm -hmm. so I always assumed it was commercial. And we have a big piece of property. We also contacted Slocum Gibbs, who is our abutter, as well as uh, the next, uh, the, the Berry guys, and we told them what we were up to. Gary, we've spoken to. The Berry guys we haven't had much communication with, although we've tried to contact them a couple of times. We haven't had much. But it seems to me that they're operating pretty much with commercial deal well, there. Well, most of that end now. Commercial. commercial. You know where the ready mix plant is and, and the Acme Creek. And the traffic is commercial. <laughs> so, so you're looking to convert it back from RA yes. to We'd like commercial? To, yeah, we'd I'd like to, to see that three pe those three pieces. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to know the history. Why did this change? We don't know. Yeah. We were never notified. No. When? Yeah, yeah. Um, we had no idea. And I, I assumed it was commercial when we got into this, and then so when we came up, we were notified here at the town hall that it wasn't, and she, took, she sent me back to, I can't remember the girl's name, Maureen or something. So this was, so this that map, is after the, yeah, revised yeah. July, uh, Maybe some economic development. Of, of a, April of 88, okay. uh, I think I, I spoke to Jack over the phone about this, he, he informed me about it, and he, and Jack, uh, hey Jack, <laughs> what do you have to say about this? What's the history? Do you have any well, idea? Well, uh, of course, I think Christy um, and her husband have proven that it used to be his own business. Mm. Um, changed well, who knows why I, I have no idea. I don't we don't know when mm. we don't know when I know as of 96 it was residential 
So sometime in between, what's that, 80 something? 88. 88 and 96, it was changed. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> we had a discussion about if they wanted to change just their property, that would be spot zoning, because you would have commercial and surrounded by residential. I suggested they reach out to the Berry guys. Berry guys are operating on an agricultural exemption. Um, I think I'm being generous. They're pushing the envelope on that exemption. And I strongly have encouraged them in the past to try to get a zone change so to legitimize their business more. And I suggested that they reach out to them and then have a swath of commercial land along Tremont that satisfies their needs, legitimizes the Berry guys, and maybe provides a little economic development opportunity in between mm. the garrison property. I did talk to the town administrator about this. He loves the idea and strongly encourages the planning board to support an article that would engulf both the Berry guys, the Kendrick property, and the property in between. But we'd have to be in agreement, uh, or, or they would have to agree that they... they no, not really. We could just do it. You have, planning board has, is, is a legitimate petitioner for zoning. As our owners, as our ten abutters, how our ten citizens. How would this affect those other two properties? Then, I mean, would that mean that they would have to pay more taxes or um, less taxes, the, or I don't would it make the land more valuable or less valuable? The value of the land is based <coughs> on the use, not on the zoning, um, unless it's vacant. So, I guess it would the property in between the two. It would make a little more valuable. Mr. Garrison property, the Berry guys and their property, it would not change unless they change the use. Um, is that I spoke to Gary. He has no interest in, you know, he's, he, he, he's a, his primary thing was that it didn't affect his, his current use, which is going to continue, which is to leave it as trees. So you and Mr. Garrison... Uh, he we, he we wants share to the, pursue this or not? Yeah, he, sa he, he said he that he doesn't opposition. want to get in our way. He has no opposition to it. That was his. Yeah, but if the planning board does not support a zoning article, then you have to have either 10 citizens or the property owners petition it. Okay. You, you can't, you can't petition Mr. Garrison property. I understand that. He of can't course. be a passive bystander. Right. Of course. So he would have to be a signatory. And if it was just their two properties, it would no longer be spot zoning because you'd have two parcels. I'm strongly urging you to, and maybe um, Stephen can reach out to the Berry guys. That property, it's a wonderful business. We want them to thrive. but mm. It is a good business. They're pushing the envelope. This would legitimize it. We wouldn't have any issue, any potential down the road issues. So, the town administrator wanted me to broach the broader subject, even though I know the Kendricks are here for just their subject. It actually would be a benefit to the town if we Absolutely. did. Absolutely. And I didn't know. I mean, I was here ten and a half years. I never knew it used to be a business. Mm. But it's clear it was. That's a zoning map. So how do we proceed? So, so you we're going to have some time, not a lot. Um, I, I, I'm going to suggest that the Kendricks and Stephen try to set up a time to meet next week. Stephen's brand new. And Welcome to the fire. Um, <laughs> and and talk about. Having a meeting with the Barry guys to see if they're willing to participate. If they're not willing, and then you know, then at the 28th possibly, you or the 12th, you can discuss whether the planning board wants to sponsor the article or just let the <coughs> property owners sponsor the article. It could be done either way, but it would probably be more helpful at 
town meeting if the planning board endorses. It would. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think whoever brought it up. I think a discussion has to be had with, and I know Mike Wainio very well and, and his wife. Um, it, it, I, I, I would not encourage the board to try to rezone somebody's property if they didn't want it rezoned. That's yeah. kind of tacky. Mm. Let me just put it that way. Yeah. So I think you should make the best effort, one last effort, to see if the Barry guys will participate. Absolutely. And, and if you hit a dead end, then at least you have two parcels. Now, now with these two parcels, are they adjoined? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're about Oh, okay, so that's not in between. It's yeah, Slocum it Gibbs would have is to be. No, in fact, property. the Barry guys is, is, would be the only not, the only non-commercial right. yeah. entity. Be. It goes commercial, the Barry guys, and to the end of town. So See, that would even work. Getting okay. up to speed here on the map. <laughs> so I got I got to ask this question, Jack. So the the permit that the Berry guys have a, is based on the under the agricultural use. It's under an agricultural exemption. Exemption, for, for because a, they're they're RA, and they do you have a copy? You met underneath it? that criteria. Remember doing the hearing permit. There, yes. If if. They want to go and do this proposed change. What does that um, does that change their permit? Well, they would no longer need an agricultural exemption. They'd be a commercial entity. See, they're operating under an agricultural exemption, and there's a certain percentage of their product which has to be locally grown and made. Right. I haven't been there in three years, so I don't. You should go because it's good. Oh, the oh, food's excellent. excellent. <laughs> you food's can get in. Excellent. <laughs> I am told, and in, in, <clears throat> I'm trying to pick my words carefully. They're wonderful people, wonderful business. It would be, I think, it'd be beneficial to them and the town to legitimize their use mm -hmm. in, in a more legitimate way, and maybe do more things they want to do there than they haven't thought of. Mm. So as far as defining a map or the zone or where we would draw the lines, yeah. I know we went through an extensive rezoning in North Garver and it took us time to do that. That would be done here. I would say that Stephen and the Kendricks and maybe the Wanios would come and, and Garretsons would come up with a proposed zoning district. Okay. It would um, it would not be spot zoning. It'd be three or two right. properties, and go from there. If it is the Berry guys, then you'd have a continual swap all the way up to where the that's up right. Yeah, it would be commercial mm -hmm. all the way. Which is obviously what it used to be. In that's the exactly 80s. right. It says a thousand feet from yeah, Sippin 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 Street all the way down. Up. And again, we don't we have no idea when or. Who or how it was changed, and uh, as landowners, I don't know, I don't understand how they could have changed the zoning without informing us in some way. You have to, yeah, you'd have to go through all the zoning maps uh, as they change. Twenty years, I know. I and, uh, and again, I asked that. I asked. Uh, and they did, told me they didn't know. Again, we could like go back through the archives, yeah. but at this point, it's. I, I'd advise you to act quickly. The deadline for town meeting is soon. Planning board can always have a placeholder if that's something they would like. But I would recommend you have something back to the planning board by the 28th, okay. at least a plan. Okay. And then if they like it, they can ask for a placeholder. If they don't, then you're on your own. You can do a petition as property owner. Okay. Okay. And he's right here. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's not back till Monday. <laughs> Monday. So if you want a sidebar and get a meeting, then it's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you guys. very much for the time. For time. All right, Stephen. No, no worries. This is what we do, Stephen. Thank you very much.
You're All right. Thank you. What has happened to our agenda? All right. Next, we have uh, Peter Allegrini, a possible zoning, uh, possible zoning signage. He was notified. He requested in writing to be here, as you can see, and he didn't. Uh, he isn't here. Next. So we go on. Okay. Move on. Planning board uh, member notes. Well, uh, let me start out. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, I'm uh, very happy to, to see uh, Stephen with us uh, tonight, and uh, and hopefully he'll uh, continue uh, working with us for many years to come. And uh, also thank Jack for for uh, for taking over and and, and filling in um, in between planners and. Um, I don't know if Jack has spoken to Stephen yet, but I guess there was talk about uh, if uh, Jack and Stephen could work together on, on you know, to, to get you going, if need be, mm -hmm. if need be, um, however you feel about it. So, again, uh, just very... I'll be leaning on you, Jack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, again, I'm, we're, we're happy to uh, have a, a new planning director with us, and I, I don't know what your... Yeah, you have will have other tasks other than uh, just working with the planning board, I believe. I do believe so as well. Yeah. I think the breadth of those tasks have yet to be fully defined to me, but you know, find out Monday. Monday. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, busy day Monday. Busy <laughs> Monday. <laughs> it all depends if he decides to come back on Tuesday. <laughs> 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 Anyone else have anything to say? I do. I, I'd like to thank Jack for all his help. Um, again, um, you've been a great asset for this town for years, and um, a lot of stuff that's happened here has been encouraging, and you've seen reap the benefits of it. You've seen what we've done. Um, Stephen, I'd like to welcome you. I think you, you'll find that Carver is a great place to work for. You'll find that the people in this town are unique, and they are in dire um, um, need of some good guidance that that they'll bring to you for knowledge and background of what the history of this town is and you'll end up being um, here for a long time you'll enjoy this town you, and you'll enjoy the people that are here so uh, welcome aboard and you can start tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, Saugus would like that. But it, would, <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that I called a planner before he actually kept, walked in the door and said, hey, what about this? <laughs> um, so thank you, thank uh, you sir, for coming on board. I want to welcome Stephen as well, and Jack, thank you for all of your time here. And I know I, you helped me a lot, so thanks, Jim. I do appreciate it. Jay, all right. so good to see you. I want you to know that. I've got to speed this up because I'm not doing good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, planning director notes. We got McCarthy Towing and. Wow. Yes, um, there's a, as you remember, McCarthy Towing, or actually the, <coughs> the um, user of that, the uh, trucking business, you had given them some marking orders, and the first one was to meet with the conservation agent. You'll see a memo in your packet that they have met. They walk the site. There are some abuses there. He's expressed um, his willingness to correct those abuses and come in front of the Conservation Commission. I assume that's what he's going to do before he files with you guys. Okay. I just wanted you to know that. Um, two other things. <coughs> These are both coming from the town administrator, solar bylaw. He wanted to know or have a discussion with the planning board about the dimensional requirements, the setbacks, the 200 feet, and he wanted me to see if the board would be willing to have some, to, to present the town meeting an article that would give the board some discretion on those setbacks. And I think the example he used is if it's in the middle of the woods, and there's no abutters, well, why do we need to have a 200-foot setback? That, that type of discussion. I 
said I'd, I, I actually he had asked me to do it the last meeting and I forgot to be honest with you or maybe Jim wasn't here and I wanted to make sure Jim was here because I know it's near and dear to Jim's heart um, I, so here it is who wanted this I, I missed it who wanted the, the town administrator oh had asked me to put it on the agenda just for a discussion and I think we did not have a very long discussion. I'm not here long enough. But I think what he's talking about is that when an application comes in front of you, instead of, and they want relief from the 200 foot setback, instead of requiring them to go to ZBA, that you would adopt a bylaw that gave you the authority to waive that if it met certain criteria. So you, don't we have that ability right now? No, no. We we have to strictly stick to correct the, the setback requirements. Correct. So the only way to get relief from it is to go to the ZBA. Correct. I don't. Know, I guess we we could discuss it. We could discuss it. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I I would like to you know this first Stephen sort of is. Um, I'm not here very long, so I, I, I don't know what to tell you other than that December 5th is the deadline, yeah. and he's looking for a decision to for... Oh, uh, right now? Well, maybe not today, but whether by we'll the 28th. A, whether we'll have a discussion at the at our next meeting about this? Um, he would like a determination whether it's something you'd like to pursue by, <coughs> yes, by the December 5th. Would this have to go to... So this wouldn't have to go to town meeting. It would absolutely have to go to. Town would have to go to town zoning meeting. amendment. Absolutely, one yeah. thousand. Does he want us to sponsor that amendment? That is correct. <laughs> okay. I and to the town administrator's credit, uh, he uh, appreciates the sensitivity of it. Hmm. Yep. And in his mind, he's taking it out of the ZBA's purview and putting it in yours. And you could always say no. That means we don't end up in court again. Well, I don't know if that was, maybe that was the impetus. I, I honestly didn't have that discussion with him. I don't think it's a coincidence. It's not. Uh, okay. Would, would, would the members be willing to discuss this? Uh, yeah, we're going to, I don't have a problem having a discussion about it. Mm. Um, who's, is he coming in to plead the case for this or what? I think I am. At least, you know, it's an unusual Stephen's yeah. taking over. I mean, I'm going to suggest this, that it seems like you're at least open a little bit. Maybe if Stephen has it on Monday or Tuesday, he can meet with Michael, get more specific on what Michael's looking for, bring it back to you on the 28th, and then you can decide, okay, that makes sense, go for it. Or, no, we need more information, or you hate it. Something like that. I don't mind having a discussion. A discussion. I don't know how, how far that would go, though. I mean, we have two members that were on the, the, uh, bylaw, committee. the, the, the bylaw committee, and, and one... And, you know, they were working for the planning board. I was the chairman of the planning board. So, I mean, so you get have you have three people here that are sort of going to uh, adhere to to what <coughs> came up. But then again, if this goes to town meeting, it actually gives the people the right to to see if they want to change this. So it takes it out of our hands in those special cases where so I'm not going to tell me do you? Okay. okay. I mean I I just I just remember the long long days that we had and this would be yeah. this would be good for Stephen to be up uh, up to speed on. The bylaw committee that was put in place I chaired Jim was uh, one of the members that wrote this bylaw with us and that we presented and brought to town. It was a very controversial um, issue through the town and we came up with this bylaw and the setbacks were what 
well, let's just say that it was almost like it was not even, it got changed at town meeting floor. Right. Um, it wasn't what really what the, the, the board had, um, the committee had recommended to bring the town meeting, it got changed at town meeting floor. So it's a, it's a hot potato. Um, we've had some issues um, with solar projects that have come to this board where, where the setbacks was an issue. And every time it seems when it comes to the board, it's an issue. Is it a 200 foot buffer? And there was a reason behind it. Um, so I'll leave it at that. We can talk more about it. Um, sure, Michael will bring you up to speed. Jack will bring you up to speed. It'll be colorful. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't see where a discussion would hurt. It's not going to hurt. Know, whether it's it will, you know whether it's going to be fruitful or not. That's yeah. that's a, that's another thing. But. Yeah. All right, so let's so we can we can do a discussion. So the next is inclusionary housing bylaw. Um, as you know, especially the chairman, we have an inclusionary bylaw, which means fifteen percent of any multifamily or subdivision um, development has to be affordable. Um, the last project that was you just discussed, uh, Patriot Pines, had some concerns about that language that we have in the bylaw. Now that bylaw was written, I don't know, if it was seven years ago? I, I can't remember. It was a long time. Bruce was the chairman of the Affordable Housing Committee at the time. Um, their attorney brought up some flaws in the bylaw, and there are a few discrepancies and a little redundancy. And so Michael, again, Michael Milanowski, because that's who I was talking to on this, suggested maybe that's something you want to bring up to clean it up and to ask Stephen to take a look at it. I would strongly urge Stephen to maybe talk to Serped to see if they can help. Serped's our regional planning agent to see if they'll help him clean it up. I don't know if you're going to be able to get it in time for this town meeting, but um, I promised Michael I'd put it on the agenda. Stephen's here and that might be something on his plate to, to work on. It, I, I read his critique of it and he is there. There's some definite legitimate concerns about some redundancy in that. <coughs> so you guys, have, it certainly has worked. But, so that's all. all that's right, enough. I'm tired. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jack. Um, we have the minutes of October 10th, 2017. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the minutes of October 10th, 2017 as written. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Not here. And Chad uh, Not here. <laughs> and Jim no, wasn't here. here, so it's just uh, Will, yeah. myself, yeah. and Kevin. So Mr. I Chairman, if I could butt in for two seconds, um, I'd like to get back to the point of having all this document sent to us prior to our meeting, so we're not rushing through to glance at the minutes and stuff. Um, we used to get those, yeah. all that stuff emailed right. to us before, so I'd like to do it. <laughs> we got the, I, I got the agenda. <coughs> I got the pine, what is it? You didn't get the minutes? They get the minutes. He's going to need to talk to Jill about getting a packet to them via email. She's usually pretty good. Yeah, I yeah. know. That was just the last one, I don't think. Yeah, I, 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 we got. I got the pine thing, but I think it was a special attachment that came through. So I don't. I don't know. No, I, I even had my wife, who's far better at the computer than me, try to look for him. <coughs> I always. I practice to scan everything and give it to you back, and it's a much easier way than mailing it. So, mm. yeah, and then have the hard copy if you need it. Okay. All right. So we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, our next meeting date will be December 12th at 7 o'clock. No, no uh, November 28th. Sorry, November 28th. <coughs> And I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second that. 
We have a motion to second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 And I think that was unanimous. Yeah.